Jesus. Hello? Jesus, so Koroma Shotrama, so Troma Shotrama, Koroma Sikia Shotrama, so Troma. Father, I just thank you, Lord, for your anointing right now in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. Let it be you, God, and not me, God. Let it be your will and not any of ours, God. Let, let ears be open, God. Let my, even my ears be open, Lord, to hear what you're saying, God. And let us see and hear and know what you're doing, God. We are called, Lord, to know the will of God at all times, God. And I thank you, Lord, that you're anointing us to do that, God. And I thank you, Lord, that even tonight, God, we put we put press in by faith, God, to know your will, God. And as we know who you are, we know that you are living in us and you are operating. And in you, we live and have our being, God. Jesus. You see, there's a there's a, a swirl right now around America. Um, the divorce rates are through the roof, right? Even in the church, everybody's running to that conference for their marriage. Everybody's running to that conference for their marriage. Everybody's running for that conference for their family. Everybody's running to this church for order to be set in their household, in their marriage, in their relationships. But nothing's working. Nothing. I've sat, I've sat and listened in the past, and I've seen many, many people who I know and love watch things on TBN, watch things on, on um, you know, other sites and, other, and whatever, you know, giving, you know, these men giving formulas and giving uh, different, um, um, just ways of thinking to try to get your marriage in order, to try to get your relationships in order. But tonight, tonight I want to, before I dive into this, tonight I wanted to make it clear, I'm going to, right now, tonight I'm going to talk about marriage. Tonight. And I know that sounds weird because it's like, wait, why don't you just round up the, the couples and just do that? Why do you got to, you know what I mean, for like, you know, Ron and, and, and you guys, it's like, what, what are... Why, why, why me? And the little's like, why me? <laughs> Ooh, this is a little loud. But we're all called to know how it's supposed to be. Yeah. We're all called, called to know where the women fit in, not only in, in marriage, but also in the church. Also in daily, and in, in, in how the body of Christ fellowships and lives and operates. We're called to know where the, where the men stand and the women stand. And we're called to know where each individual stands, whether it be a calling and gifting. Okay? But right now, we're talking about, I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to insert some aspects of how, you know, uh, the men and the women should be in the church. But this is also, this is going to be really focused around marriage. Okay? Because we have all these people going all around the, the globe trying to figure out what's the key to their marriage. What's the key to, to, to you know, get that harm and get to, to so that, to uh, prevent a divorce, so that, uh, you know, the household is not flipped upside down all the time. And we're always going to uh, man's wisdom, man's um, thinking, you know, all these, and, 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 and they may preach and they may even sound godly, but it's, this, they come up with a formula. They come up with, step by step how to get your marriage in order if anybody tells you step by step or form or a formula then it's not a god because i'm telling you right now because listen this is why we're all called to know this because the 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 what we look at to get our marriages in order i tell you is something i'm learning myself what i tell you is something that i've that god has been putting on my heart he's been showing me how it's how what how he's designing it Okay, so I just want to say that before I go on. I'm not telling you off of something that I've conquered already. I'm telling you off of something that the Lord has shown me and He's, and he's showing His body on how it's supposed to be. Because there's too much disorder, not, not only in the marriage place, but there's also too, too much disorder when it comes to men and women in the church. You, I mean, look, look if, I mean, you guys have been there to the many churches in overseas and even here. I mean, I, did you guys see what I posted uh, two weeks ago or a week ago? The first transgender, I mean, the first uh, uh, lesbian couples that became pastors in, in, a, in a church in Washington, D.C., a Baptist church. 
They're, they're, they're co-pastors now, and they're both women married to each other. Says once saved, always saved in the Baptist church. Yep. And look where that got them. But see, and there's, there's also this, there's also this lack of order, and you know, and, and movements like that, they, you know, there's so much when it comes to when it comes to the uh, um, worldly views. There's like this great, and I want you to know, I'm not, I'm not siding with men. I'm not siding with women tonight. Okay, this is not about that. This is about divine order. But when you see how things are supposed to be, everybody will see the glory in, in being in their position. But out in, in the world right now, there's a massive movement of all the women coming up and, and, and running the household. All the women coming up and, and being, you know, the man of the house. You know, the, 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 the women pride, they have all these movements now. And the problem is we have too many teachers, we have too many people coming in the church still with those mindsets and still with that mentality and you see and you mostly see them they're they're watching oprah winfrey and all this garbage and then they come in the church and try to te teach the church how to have a marriage and then you see you don't you, there's no submission there's no there's no um order it's just everybody's free, everybody you know they use scriptures they'll use scriptures in the bible to justify how their worldly marriage should be and in, 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 even though they're christians Okay, I want to tell you something. I want to tell you something. This is going to be a key for tonight, okay? And if you want to write this down, you can write this down. But the Lord said, someone with, with submission is someone who's without strife. He put it, he put it another way. I got to remember, but it was like, it was, the way he put it earlier, it kind of rhymed. But that, I'm not trying to rhyme here. I'm trying to bring forth the truth so, you can, so people can... Our marriages and our and everything can be set free. Okay, uh, someone who is submissive is without strife. Strife is bitterness or 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 anger or this discord. Okay, and I see a lot of strife even among our marriages in the body, even in the remnant. Okay, with the woman striving, you know, with that having that strife against the man. And the man having that strife against the woman, and there's always clashing happening. That can never, that can never come. come there can never be a, something brought across without a fight. It's always a toss-up. Look at, don't look at, don't look at, don't th think about the knowledge. Think about, examine. For those who are married, examine yourselves. Or for those who know, just you know, if you've seen anything, there's always uh, in, in in marriages. Even if you look in the world, with everything. There's always a toss-up when it comes down to decisions. Who makes a decision? Who, whose opinion is better? There's always a, a, like, you know, two dogs fighting. And that's not the way it should be in the church. I'm telling you, that's not the way it should be in the church. But the, the fact of the matter is, the reason why it is in the church, and remember, this, this, is, I'm, this is the truth. I'm not, I'm not siding with any, 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 gen, any side, my gender, whatever. I'm telling you the truth. The reason why there's such a toss-up, okay, when it comes to the man and the woman not being able to be in order with each other, not, the man, not, the woman not being able to submit, is because the man, the woman, first of all, it's, uh, let me tell you this. No, nobody's off the hook. The husband is not off the hook, and the woman is not, and the, and the wife is not off the hook, okay? The husband, okay, we can, so we can, everybody talks about Jezebel, right? Okay? Jezebel was controlling and manipulating, and, and you can say that he... He, she she uh, a minute drove Ahab and she she steered Ahab. She she was the she was the man in the, in the relationship. Okay, but how about Ahab? How come he didn't step up and, and not tolerate it? How come he tolerated it? Okay, so there's two there's two. It's not only Jezebel. It's both. You cannot you cannot have a Jezebel that that is able to prosper without an Ahab allowing it. If an Ahab, if there's prospering of the Jezebel spirit, I don't care. I, I mean, we've seen it happen everywhere. We've seen it happen, maybe even on our homes. We've seen it happen here. We've seen it happen in other churches. If there's a Jezebel spirit that's prospering in the church, it's because an Ahab has allowed it. There can be Jezebels, and then the Ahab, and, and and the leader doesn't doesn't give into the Ahab spirit. But if the, if the leader gives in, guess what? That's that's how you know a Jezebel spirit is prospering because there's somebody allowing this. Okay. Or whether it be doctrine, you know, you know, the doctrine, how Je the Jezebel doctrine got in the last day in the Book of Revelation. That's be you know, you know what I'm talking about. In the Book of Revelation, when it says you allowed those teachings of Jezebel 
in the church, that's because there was an Ahab that allowed it. Okay, so you got two sides. You got one woman that's out of line and one man that's also out of line, okay? So there's so in, in, in a relationship, there's two sides of the story. So I'm, I, wanna, I want you to see that right now, okay? But a big problem, okay, and I'm going to start here just because this is where I feel led. A big problem in, with, with, when it comes to marriage, okay, is that the, the woman does not, okay, you know how we talk about, okay, let me just bring up the scripture so you don't get confused. Okay, we talk about Ephesians, right? 5.22 to 23. Just, just to read a little excerpt of that. Wives, submit yourselves to your own husband as you do to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church. Okay? Now as the church submits to Christ, so also the wives should submit to the husband. Okay? We think about that a lot. We think about the, you know, how the wife is supposed to submit to the husband. But I'm telling you right now, there's no, there's no woman that I know of. Okay? And I'm going to get to the, the other side of this as far as the man's part. There's no woman that I know of that sees that, that can gracefully submit to their husband. There's none. And I, I, let's not, I, I know that we, that was going to happen. <laughs> you know, everybody looks at each other, and I'm sure if everyone was here, she'd look at me. But I'm telling you right now, there's not, it's, that's the truth. That's the truth. There's no woman that can gracefully submit. Why? This is, I'm getting, I'm going, this is going deep tonight. Don't get mad at me. But I'm just telling you because this is what I felt, what I, what's on my heart, okay? Because when you, when you, when you, when you give, when you see this, everything is going to work out right the way it's supposed to be because I'm telling you right now you think if you think our marriage is supposed to look like the world and and we're going to and we're just going to get we're going to get saved and our marriage is going to be acceptable to God no our marriage is supposed to be the glory of God of the relationship between the bride and and the bridegroom that's what it's supposed to emanate that's the purpose of marriage do you know that the purpose of marriage is not only to reproduce and for a pleasure between a man and a woman but it's also especially to show the relationship between the bridegroom and the bride this is the great mystery that it talks about it says that it says that marriage is a great mystery when paul was talking about that he says that after that why is it a great mystery because this is christ, what christ does when he puts us in, in order of these things there are types and shadows of what he's doing of, of his last day movement of him of, of him and the bride of the cross Okay, and that's what marriage is, is supposed to look. Our marriages are supposed to look like the relationship between the bride and the bridegroom. And the world, we're called to have the world see that. So that they can see, see how a real marriage in Christ looks like. Because I'm telling you, in, the last, in, in this, 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 there is awakenings already here like Shane was talking about. But when we, when we, when we get out of our religion... And we get and we step into the awakening that's already here, okay? The, the marriages and the marriages that are going to be immersed in Christ, and so and the the two the two that come together that are going to be dead and alive to Christ, truly. I'm telling you, those marriages are going to be totally unstoppable, and they're going to be totally immovable. There's a place like that, and we get we get the sayings of the world that we say, oh well. You know, it's always going to be like this with my wife, and just we talk, we talk like the world. But I'm telling you, our marriages are not even supposed to be even close to what what the world's marriages look like. This you, you say, oh well, you never you never you know, oh brother, you know you know you will never stop arguing with our spouse. Well, guess what? God said the impossible can happen. Okay, and I I I, I beg to differ with that. Okay, because I know there's a day where God says. He's bringing us to be perfect and spotless. Not only, not only how he sees us, but really perfect and spotless. And our marriage is perfect and spotless where, as to where it really looks like. Like when I step into, you know, uh, two, two who are married in their, into their house. When I step into their house, I'm, I can see just by everything they do, I can see the bridegroom and the bride in that. Through everything they do and how they talk to each other and how they interact to each other and how they give in to each other. And, and just everything looks like that. 
Because that's what it was made to be. If God made it to be like that, if that's his great mystery for us and for us to reveal that mystery and show it on the outward, then it's supposed to be that way. Okay? And that's, that's what I was mentioning before, how everybody's going around the globe trying to find the answers to their marriage when the answers for their marriage is in the bride and the bridegroom. How the bridegroom acts and how God, you, said, you see it says Jesus, it says that the man should love his wife as Christ loves the church. And the wife should submit to the, to the man as the church submits to Christ. That's what it says right there. Just, it doesn't even just, and, and, and I'm not getting little, you know, real crazy on this, but it doesn't just, it doesn't just say as Christ submits to the church or, or the church submits to Christ. It says just as. You see, there's a big difference there. Just as, meaning in the same way. So in the same way, the, wife, the Christ submits to, uh, Christ uh, uh, loves, the ch loves the church and how he, how he acts towards the church is the same way the man should be to the, to the, to the woman. And the same way the, the church is supposed to be towards the Lord is the same way the wife is supposed to be to the man. Just as, the same way, meaning how a woman, meaning how we submit to the Lord is how a wife should, should, should submit to the, to the husband. Can I ask you a question? Do, do, would you ever back, to, as a, just as a wife here, and, and don't worry, there's going to be a good, a good, good coming out of this, okay? Hold on. As a wife, okay? Which, okay, no, actually, you know what, let me do this. As a man of, or woman of God, would you go to the Lord and back talk him if he, if he told you? something? Would you go to the Lord and would you argue with him if he told you something? If, would, would, you, would you fight with the Lord? I mean, some people do, but I'm talking about a real, I'm talking about somebody who's submitted. Would you fight with the Lord if he told you to do something or he told you to go a certain way or he told you to follow this? Would you, would you fight with him? No, nobody would. Well, when we know it's the Lord, right? And that's the same way the wife is supposed to be to the husband. That's hard to take in. But let me tell you something. There's this wrong view, totally wrong view. And most women have it, and I, bet, and I, would, I would beg to, I, 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 don't, I don't know if there's even a woman that doesn't have this view. That I haven't, I haven't met a woman that doesn't have this view. Oh, well, how can I submit to that? It's true. I mean, the guys are looking at me like, like, you serious? Like, this is the Bible. <laughs> this is the Bible. Seriously, this is things I've heard in my, you know, own relationship. Sorry, I had to say that. <laughs> and this is things I've heard in many, even people in the body of Christ. Do I really got to submit to what, he's, to what he's saying? Do I really have to? But what if, what if he's wrong? But what if he's going the wrong way and I see it? What if he just doesn't listen to me? You don't trust him. But here's the thing. There's a bigger picture here. Okay? There's a bigger picture. Because I'm telling you, when your heart... Let me ask you this. When, if you don't submit to the Lord, do you think he's going to ever submit to you? If you don't submit to the Lord, do you think He's ever going to submit to you? What I mean by the Lord submitting to you is giving you the desires of your heart, moving on you, when you as you move, uh, 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 giving into you as you preach, as and and move and putting His power on you. Do you think He'll give into you if you give in, if you don't give into Him? If you're if you're a rebellious son or daughter to God, do you think He'll ever give in to you? Do you think He'll ever? Submit to you? When you ask Him, God, come down. Bring your fire. When you ask Him, God, supply my needs. He still does it. But not like He wants to. If you're rebellious. And if we, if we establish that and say, well, how can a wife's... How can... Um, 
so the Lord submit to someone who's not who's not submitting to Him? Then how can we? How can a man submit to a woman that doesn't submit to Him? But I want to tell you something here. When you submit to the Lord as a son or daughter of God, He submits to you. Meaning, when you call upon His name, He shows up. Meaning, when you ask Him something, He gives it to you. This is biblical. I'm talking about someone who's submitted, meaning they're purified already. They're not going to ask amiss, spending it on their own lust. Okay? But he submits to the son that is submitted to him in every way. You're not submitted to him on your finances? Guess what? He's going to let you learn. And, he's not going to, and he's not, he may not move like he wants to. He may, he may move on other places, but... He's not going to submit. He's not going to come to your level. He's saying, come up here, son or daughter, okay? And that's, this is the same thing in marriage. This is the bigger picture. As a woman, when you submit to your husband, there's something that happens. There's a grace that comes upon the man's heart that he submits to the wife. Because this, this is Bible, guys. This is Bible. That the, the woman shall submit to the man, but the man shall, and the man shall submit to the woman. But just like, if you don't submit to the Lord, he's not going to submit to you. The same thing in a relationship. And that's why when we have the man and woman, they can never get it together. Because partial, it's, either, it's either the wife is not submitting to the husband, or the husband is not submitted to God. Because you see, this is, in marriage, this is a three-way relationship. It's like a triangle, Right? Everything fits together. This is the perfect marriage. This is the perfect marriage. This is the formula to the perfect marriage. The man is submitted to God, and the woman is submitted to the man. That's a perfect marriage right there. And we say, well, aren't we submitted already? If you can't submit to your husband, even when you think he's wrong, then guess what? You're not submitted to him. A real wife, a real son, submits to the one they're married to no matter what they say. They, they give in. They may not feel it. They may not think it's right. But they trust them. Let's show you. Like Steve was in the army, right? What's... The, what's, what's uh, what is it, corporal, and then who's above a corporal? Sergeant. And who's above a sergeant? Lieutenant. Lieutenant, right? Okay. <laughs> so what would happen if a corporal didn't submit to the sergeant? The lieutenant will discipline him. And things, and things don't work out. Is the, is the corporal going to get his way? No. No. Okay. What happens if the sergeant doesn't submit to the... Commander. To the lieutenant? To the, yeah, to the lieutenant. When the captain deals with the sergeant. And what happens if they all submit to each other? You have a team. That's the word of God, too. When, like I said, when the wife submits to the man, there's a grace that comes upon the man to where he's able to submit to the woman. And that's how they come to one flesh. See, the women, this is the problem in the body of Christ with, with um, and I'm going to get to the man, don't, don't worry. Okay? But this is the problem with, with some, the women in the, in the body of Christ. Not every, all, but I'm saying there's a big the mindset. Okay? They think, oh, well, I've got to submit to him, and I gotta, I'm got to. i like his slave, I'm like this, and blah, blah, blah. Well, that's like if a son or daughter went to God and said, oh, I'm a slave now, I've got to submit to God. But why does the, per the man of God submit to God? Because he sees the glory in it. Why do you submit to God? Because of what he did for you and his love for you and, who, and, and, and his life, his glory shed upon you and what will happen if you do. But I'm telling you right now, you have to see the glory to submitting. The woman has to see the glory to submitting to the husband or else she'll never be able to. If there's... If there's if she doesn't see the glory, if she doesn't see the bigger picture, it'll never work. She'll just have the mindset, the religious mindset. Well, he's always right. I'm always wrong. He's always right. I'm always wrong. I got to do what he says. 
That's that's people that's people in the, in the church saying this. It's that that's not. I mean, you got because you got women that give in that that submit to their husbands, but they have that mindset. Well, he's always right. I'm always wrong. Yeah, he's always. But the, the, see, that's not a good. Yeah, you may submit, but that's not the attitude. You're not submitting. Your heart is not really submitted. You're outwardly submitting in your flesh, but your heart is not submitted. It doesn't guide. If it doesn't have your heart, forget it. It's not true submission. True submission is something that's established where you where you are faithfully obedient instead of like Cain, where he was a worker, but he was working in strife. He was working in bitterness because he didn't know the glory that was on the other side of being obedient. There's something that happens. Get this. Totally, totally take this and run and run with it. There's something that there's this grace that comes upon the man when the wife submits and then he wants to go to her. Okay? The man goes the wrong way, right? The wife submits. Maybe she had a you know, it doesn't mean the wife can't say, hey, I think we should go this way. Okay, but if he says, no, I'm going this way, it's that way and that's it. That's the final decision. Okay? But maybe, because this is what happens, right? The, the man says, I want to, we get, we need, this is the direction. And then the wife fights the whole time. She's going nuts. Oh, no, no, blah, 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 going nuts. And he can't even hear what she's even, her opinion because he's so focused on the fact that she's just trying to be manipulated and controlling. And now you see the, the controlling, the Jezebel spirit gets in the way of her actually saying what she wants to say. So maybe it'll help out the result of what they're doing. Did you understand that right there? Did you understand that part right there? Everybody got that? Okay. The man is blocked by this spirit yeah. this of manipulation and control that he can't actually hear what she's saying. He's too focused on how she's acting. That's what we have many times happen. I've had it happen many times in my own relationship, okay? But when you recognize it, you take it down. See, there's things that get in the way. There's these spirits that get in the way that break our communication and, and try to come and break our covenant with our significant other. Some of you guys are going to get married in here, so you need to hear this. But what if the woman doesn't put up a fight? What if the woman's not letting that spirit come through her? And she's not because she's submitted. Because she's actually submitted. Then maybe the man will be like, wait a minute. Maybe you are right. Wait, let me think this through. But see, there's no fight there. He, he, he thinks about it. And if he feels that, go with that. He submits and then he goes with that. But he, he doesn't submit because... She's, he, he submits because they're one. Okay? But here's the deeper part about this whole thing. God's involved in this. God's involved in this relationship. Okay? So what if, you're, what if you submit, Joe? What if you're saying, okay, you're saying, okay, what if the wife submits to the man, but then they're going the wrong way still, right? Oh, guess what? There's not only two walking here. There's three walking here. There's one in front of him, too. And he's the God of all creation. Whew, that should give you chills. It just gave me chills. Okay? The God of all creation is in front of the man. <laughs> he's leading the whole relationship. But if the woman would just see that, she wouldn't worry anymore. Even if the guy's wrong, God will redirect, surely redirect their steps. Because this is, because this is what we're seeing in the church, the religious church out there. And the false grace church out there, they, they have this, yeah, they're in the false grace, whatever, but really their hearts are not in it. So then the wife says, well, I want to go this way. He's going that way. And then that just keeps happening over and over and over and over for years, years, years. Finally, let's, let's just end it, man, because this ain't working. This ain't working. That's why there's divorce in the church. Because there's no submission. And then you have, you have churches that preach about this. Okay? You have churches that preach, you better submit to your husband, woman. You better not talk in the church. You better not do it. Or man, you better step up. And you... But they, see, that's the, it's legalism doesn't have the glory in it, okay? 
Because when, you, when the wife sees the glory in submitting to the husband, she'll want to do it. And when the man sees the glory in leading his wife, he'll want to do it. Now let's get to the, to the man side of this whole equation. Now real quick before I go there. By the way, if the wife, I just want to say this. If the woman is not submitting to the man, she doesn't trust God. She doesn't trust God. Because, ask yourself this question. Are we in Christ? Are we both after God? Yes, yes. So then you don't trust the word if you, if you can't submit because he says, the Lord says, I will surely guide your steps. I will surely lead the way. I will, I'm leading you by still water. The Holy Spirit leads you. Even if you go the wrong way, I will, I, will, I will surely get the one sheep and I'll bring them back. I will surely get the one marriage and bring it back. But I'd rather, I'd rather be lost together and the Holy Spirit lead us back than be divorced. This is real stuff. The Lord is guiding your marriage. That's why when we talk about, you know, a triangle, there's three points to the triangle. The two points don't connect. There's, they, don't, they have no source if that one point, which is God, is not there. Okay? And if, let's say, okay, I wish we could get, anybody have a marker or something like that? Or a pen? Doesn't matter. Here. That was just a bad catch. A bad. Yeah. Okay? I hope you guys can see this. Okay? I'm going to try to make it big. I don't like doing demonstrations, but this is the best way I can explain it. Okay, look. You got God here, right? Show it for the camera. You have God here, right? You have the woman. You have the man. I should really write it, but we don't got time for that. Okay? What if the woman is not submitted to God? Well, guess what? This is an unbalanced relationship. What if the man is not submitted to God, but the woman is? Still an unbalanced relationship. Okay, so this is how God fits in the whole picture. But what if the woman is not submitted to the man, and the man is not submitted to the woman? It's still unbalanced. They all three submit to each other, just like the Trinity. So there's submission to everybody. Everybody in the relationship submits to each other. But if one... Does it, it comes out of submission, they all, it all falls. This is what keeps the triangle. This is what keeps the marriage together. Is everybody in submission with each other. The, 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 God is the woman is submitted to God. Man is submitted to God. The, the man and woman are submitted to each other. And I don't know why I feel like saying this over and over again. But you're going to need to hear it over and over again. When the woman submits to the man, there's a supernatural grace. This is what God told me, that the man is able to submit to the woman. We see so many times the man is never able to submit to the woman, even if the woman's right. Even if the woman has a great thing, a revelation, the man is never able to submit to the woman because she's not submitted to him. Because there's so many times we can be right, but if there's a Jezebel spirit behind it, it's wrong. If it's not God, it's wrong. It's, it may be right, but it's not right here. So when there's submission, it all comes together. Now what, let's look at the man side of this thing. Okay, because we're not off the hook. <laughs> what if the woman... Oh, here's your pen. Sorry about that. <laughs> what if the <laughs> And, and this is what we have so many, we, this, is, this is something we, a lot of the stuff we know, okay, and especially this one. What if the woman is not submitting? You know, because this is what God told me. He said, and I just want to tell you this, because this is what I heard, and this is what I heard when I was praying earlier. I, this is what I, all I heard, I'm going to say it exactly the way I heard it. I hear a cry of the woman, or of the man, crying out for the woman to get it. And I hear a cry of the woman crying out for the men to rise up, to get it. They're both crying out for each other. But see, the problem is they're doing too much crying out for each other instead of doing their own part. 
They're too focused on their significant other not doing their part, that they're not doing their own part. They're coming so out of line that they're too focused. And then that's when things get real. That's when things get crazy. Because then every time the man will see the woman, he's going to be bitter towards her. Every time the woman sees the man, he's going to be bitter. You're not doing your part. You're not being the husband. You're not doing your part. You're not being the woman. And this is boom, 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 boom the whole time. But if no matter if the man still is, is, not in, is out of line, but if the women would just come on there and submit still, God will move on it. If the man or if the woman is, not, is still out of line and the man would just stay in his place and, and, and step in authority and not, and not let the devil get in, things will still, God will move on it. Because God is the one that, that makes this whole thing center anyway. So we have to get, we have to stop being so busy on the other gender that, or the other person in our relationship and, and be on, on where we're supposed to be. And if where we're supposed to be, God won't have to deal with both of us. He'll just have to deal with one of us. There won't be two problems. There'll only be one problem. Because at that point, if they're both going at each other, the whole marriage is out of line. But if one would just be submitted, if the one would just be submitted, it will be intercession for the other. It will help the other. When you are standing in your place, whether you're a wife or you're a husband, as a wife submitting and as a man uh, standing in the ground that God has stood you in, or the authority that he stood you in, it'll work. It, things the, the, the other, it'll help the other person because when you keep as a man when you keep submitting to an unsubmissive wife or an unsubmissive woman you're giving into a Jezebel spirit you're giving into the control and the manipulation and then the unsubmissive one the one that built with strife the woman she, she keeps she keeps letting that that keeps getting fed by her husband so she keeps bringing in manipulation and she feels more pull to bring more manipulation until she's so consumed her husband that the husband starts saying happy wife happy life have you heard that one before that's what it comes to and it can happen in the church so we should be real serious about this because i heard this me and chase we used to work at blue green we used to talk to a lot of people and i've heard men that were in the church even leaders say happy wife happy life and you know how much that just sickens me but then there's on the other side of it when the man's like, oh, well, you know, she's, you know, she's got to be the slave and blah, 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 blah. No, that's wrong too, so don't get it twisted. Yeah. Okay? But th this, is, this type of stuff is sick. Man. This should be love. <laughs> this, is, this is love. The, the, what it is between God, what motivates God to move on you, or what motivates you to move with God is love. And this should be the same thing in your own relationship. But if you would just see the whole... The, the, the everything that God is doing in it, the glory in it, in the whole relationship, it'll all, it, you, got, you won't, you won't um, um, let things be fiddling you in your mind. You won't think, think like, oh, what, what if he, he leads me astray or what if she does never submits? You, you'll, always, you'll always have peace about it because you know there's something greater coming. But if the two would work together, God will just sweep you both up. There's so much that there's so much that we're missing in in the marriage. So much that we're missing. There's so much more. There's so much greater debt to this whole thing. There's so much so much greater. That our, the marriages in the body of Christ are supposed to be powerful. We're to where they minister to get. We've already seen it with Shane and Marlene where they minister together and there's power that breaks out. And they and not only sets captives free and, and, and sets people free, but also sets marriages free. Because not only are they hearing the word from their mouths, but they're also seeing how their marriage is. And, it, and when they see that, they know there's more hope. There's hope. There's hope. And then when they come to ask them, why is your marriage so great? It's because we mirrored, we mirrored the bridegroom and the bride. If you, want to, if you need a base to how this marriage is supposed to work out, always go back to the bridegroom and bride. How you know your role as a woman, that you're the bride in the relationship with, with Jesus. And as the man in the marriage, you're, the, you're, the, you're, you're, you're Christ in this relationship. And if the two don't get in their, in their, in their, in their spots, it, it doesn't work out. There's a division. Men, love 
your wives as Christ loves the church. We have so many men that are so bitter towards their wives. And they, they minister to their wives. And I've, I've been here. I've been there. I've been even here re there recently. And that's why I, I believe that God's even talk, it's talking to me about this too as well. Where we minister to our wives, but we're bitter about it. Because we're so focused on our attitude. We're so... But I'm telling you right there, if that's the case, if you're bitter about it, it's because you're letting that spirit, you're letting that, that out of order put you in order. When you let the, 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 uh, the wife come out of order and you let the, oh, that, her, her, that overtaking thing of manipulation and control is, I'm, talking, I'm not talking about just, I'm talking about manipulation and control here. Okay, when you let that happen and you allow that and you tolerate it, this is why you're always going to be bitter. You'll never have peace as a man. The men need to not let Ahab be their foot, be their be their seat. They need to stand. We need the men need to stand their ground, and they need to rise up. You see, the man will never be in place with his wife if his relationship with God is not in place. See, that's the other part of it too, because it flows like this: it's God, the man, the woman. And they all are in unison together. But I'm telling you, yes, this, even if this, this may be together, the man and the woman, but if the man and, the, and God are not together, it's, it's, it, it's, it creates problems. Because see how God is here? The source of love and peace and joy, everything flows through the whole thing from Him. He's, that's why He's there. He's, he's the source of union in your marriage. The source. If you don't see God as the source in your marriage, they'll never, it'll never prosper. Never. But then, when things come in a line, when the wife is, is submitting to you and you're actually not being an Ahab leader and you're not being an Ahab husband and you're actually standing on the ground that the Lord has put you on, and you're standing your ground where you not accept manipulation and control, and those two are working together, there's bliss. There's submission to each other. There's working together. That's how a marriage comes together where they work together, where literally they're thinking the same thing, where the wife and the husband are thinking the same thing, because you know how it says Jesus gives us the mind of Christ? He gives us his heart, and it's the same way in a marriage where literally our hearts and our mind is lined up with our wife or our husband. That's how, that's how intimate the marriage is. Where our thought, we're on the same thought, we're on the same step, we're on the same beat, we're on the same accord. And that's, how, that's what it's like with Christ in the church. Just as Christ in the church. On, the sa on one accord, on the same mind, the same thinking, the same intentions. In there, there's no division. There's absolutely no division. Christ and the bride is your base. Never forget that. Never forget that. Christ and the bride is your base to a better marriage. That's the key to a better marriage. It's not... Coming up with these things where, oh, I'm just going to go out and get her roses and, and hearts and I'm going to see if that works. Or, oh, I'm just going to buy him, you know, the gun he wants and let's see if that works. And, you know, be, be love to each other and just, you know, try to, try to you know, I hear, I, this is some, from Christian preachers. Oh, you know, try to come together and just try to get, make time for each other. And, you know, Fireproof. try to get intimate, huh? Fireproof? <laughs> the religious movie? Yeah. That's from that too. And then there's also this, well, I'm not going to say anything, but. Anyway, this, like this, you know, try to get alone. But I never, I don't see, I don't see anything from the Word of God in this. You see, when you're submitted to each other and it's working together, that stuff, you know, getting things for each other, loving on each other, that comes naturally. That follows it. It's not something you do to try to get a better relationship. It's something. It's the. It's the fruit of 
a better relationship where when two are and thanks brother when two are, are are in unison together a wife and a husband all that stuff happens all of it happens but yet they try to pick the fruits to try to get something that needs to be a root the fruits only come from the root and if your marriage is not rooted in the word of God forget about it there will be no fruits you can try all you want but it won't last anything the world teaches you is never lasts but everything God teaches you is everlasting It'll last forever. And there'll, and there'll be no breaking it. There'll be no tearing it down because it's all standing on the rock. We need to know these things in the church. Because even if it, it may not, you may not be married, there's times where women will come up unsubmitted to the leader. Or even, I don't even, you don't even have, this is different now. Now if we're talking about just, the, just the, as far as leadership, you can have a man coming under an, uh, an apostle or whatever the case may be, or the head of, someone that, who's put in place in the church, and they're not submitted. It's the same thing. It works out the same way. And that's why we have to know this, because we have to know our place. That doesn't mean... Women don't have, don't get this twisted. That doesn't mean women don't have a voice. That doesn't mean that they are, you see in the Bible, they're called to prophesy. They're called to do these things. But if it's not submitted under their husband, or, if, or even in the, in, when it comes to leadership, if the person is not submitted under the leadership, it never, it's never by the Spirit. It never works. It has, it has the oil on it. And if the man, in the, if the leader in the church, and we know this stuff, if the leader in the church tolerates someone, then guess what? Then it's going to turn the church upside down. If he tolerates a Jezebel spirit, or he tolerates any type of spirit. And it works the same way. That's why people, single people are like, oh, why, why, why do we need to know this? No, you need to know this. Because just daily interaction between a man and a woman should be like that. They, it's not, not that you have to be married to interact to a man this way or a, a woman this way. Though a woman still submits to the man. Not, and, it, and it says as fitting in the Lord. It doesn't say submit, meaning do whatever they say. You know, if he says jump off a bridge, go jump off a bridge. No. It means as fitting in the Lord. As by the Spirit. When, it, when, a, when a man is uh, submitted under God, you... But even, as, but even as a leader, this isn't just for the women. This is, if Shane says, we need to go this way. Even if I don't think it's right, I still go. I may say, hey, I what, if, what about this? But if he's still going, I still go. Or else there's the discord. Of course, there's always, there's always going to be a time when somebody th has, there's going to be a time where one person may have a different opinion. Or he has a different way. But that doesn't mean automatic discord. You just go your own way. That's called, you're called, that's called a lone ranger. That's called someone who's rebellious. We've had that here. Where they think differently. No, it's you follow. And if you're wrong, it, you, God will correct it. That's where God fits into this whole thing. He corrects those that are, are, are out of place. And he exalts those that are in place. That are humble. This is a big deal. Because... Some of, some of the reasons why we're not receiving and we're not getting to the places we're not getting to when it, in, in the church is because there's, there's things, marriages, people, and people under leadership that are not submitted. And God is always having to come with, the, with these words saying, repent and get out of your ways. Get out of your ways of not submitting to one another, of not coming out, of not doing... Because we're, we're, too, we're too on that, that if we were just submitted, he would take us to other levels in Christ. He would, if you would just, if the man and women were, were one in union with each other, he would take that marriage to other levels. But God can't take the marriage, the, the marriage to other levels until the two are one. It'll never happen until the two are one. But it starts with this. Uh, just like the church 
as the church submits to, to Christ, the woman submits to God. I mean, to, the woman submits to the man. And it works out. And then, and, then, and then the man, there's a grace that comes upon him. And then they, they walk together as one. And just like with you and God, just like with you and God, he, 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 he guides you and you give in. And it all works out. And there's no, there's no division because you're dead. Because you have no agenda. Because you don't see another way. You only see his way. And when you see his way, then he comes into you and says, Son, what do you want? What do you want? What's your de desires? I'll fill it. What's your desires? I'll fill it. I'll give you what you ask for. And that's how the man will be in the relationship that is, that is one in Christ. So Father, I thank you, Lord, that we will be women, men and women consecrated unto you, but Lord, we will be, have our marriages consecrated unto you, God. We will have our marriages in place with you, God. We will have our marriages, Lord, to a place where there's no discord, there's no Ahab, there's no Jezebel. There's only submission. Let our marriages, God, let the marriages, Lord, even, even in, in, in the church of the remnant, Lord, let it be a representation of your bride and the bridegroom. Let it be a representation, God. Show us, God, how the bride interacts with the bridegroom and how the wife should interact with the husband. Show us, God, how the bridegroom interacts with the, the, the bride and how the husbands, and just the same way the husbands shall react, shall act towards the woman. Let it be the same way, Lord. Let what you purpose for marriage show the world what a marriage in Christ looks like. Let there be couples that rise up, Lord, in Christ, God, and show and bring the glory of God wherever they go, God. In every arena and every place, God. And, and, and let it show all the, the marriages of the world and let them even see the marriages of, of, of Christ, Lord, and then, and then come to you and give in to you, God. And repent and see, turn from their ways because they see Christ. Even in a marriage, God. Jesus, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Do you, you have some? Yeah. Because you want to be equal. That's right. exactly what I was going to say on Facebook. And because you think you're equal, now you're taking someone else's role and you got both now. And that's what's going to. And I was like, this is going to go over like a lead balloon. I was going to write, like it had nothing to do with, and it was about, it was like really crazy because I was like, because that's what Satan did. Now he said, make the women equal. When, you know, we're not equal, the woman's called the weaker vessel. So then the women, woman wants to be there, but then she wants to turn around and point fingers at the man divorcing him or leaving because the man is not uh created to play that role and that's why the division happens because they were created to lead and when they're not allowed to lead this turmoil goes on and then and they just take off and that's why they end up uh and i'm telling you it's a work of satan though it's not like oh yeah we got and so this big movement is so sat satanic because when did when did major divorce start happening when the women wanted, I'm not talking about voting, because I but when the whole thing about, so what if you couldn't vote, let the men do it. What was the big deal, right? But it was a big deal because I'm a human, because they weren't submitted to God. It was, and if you're so into the world about voting or whatever, I'm just saying, but it's not a problem with voting. But the, the aspect of the whole thing, then you have now Jezebel r r running homes and 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 thing in America, and then you have the opposite. In, um, in the other region where the men lord over the woman and they don't have any say, there's no unity at all because they don't have a voice. But there is a submission where he, in America, which had it in the um, early times, and then they, the, the woman rebels, so Satan comes, and that's what he, in the garden, the same thing. So I was going to say, but that was so weird, ironic this morning because it was like, where is this coming from? Well, I guess it was God because I'm like, why am I thinking about this so god must be thinking about this because and then all of a sudden it gets turned around 
Um, oh, he left the family. Well, if you didn't want to, to, because yeah, then what? Now I got to work. Now you got two people working. When God didn't design, really, two people to have to work, but America made it now where it's impossible. Satan made it to where it's impossible, really, to live on a, a one income. So Satan works in that. So the woman had to come, but then she. But how many women were housewives, and now how many women are housewives now? And how many kids are messed up now? And how many kids were messed up 40, 50 years ago? All out of order. That's how it all happens. It. it you know what I'm saying? Right. So all of a sudden, uh, they want to. Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. So it's a big deal. Vote. But then it was vote. Then this. Now, well, we want to make the same money. We want to do the same job. So then, you know, you ever see the picture with the girl with the rolled up thing? You know, in the 70s. Yeah. She's got her arm rolled up with her muscle. Yeah. Started a little bit, just like cartoons, getting demonic. And now, Hillary Jezebel wants to run the country. Yeah. Right. Where does it go? You know what I'm saying? It's not that woman. No. Okay. And they run other countries. It's not that, but they're not created to have that pressure, to have that authority. In the spiritual realm. And they want it because Satan gets in there and it's a spirit of control. Do you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, honestly. And next thing you know, it's going to be a lesbian woman running America. Mm -hmm. And then I'll be in that. In 10 years, if, if Jesus doesn't come back, it's going to be gross. What's going to happen? Because darkness is getting gross and gross. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's like, and then the giving in of that, it's like, yeah, it's a little bit. It's, that's how Satan takes over. And he brings the division. That's what he does in churches. So when there's out of order, it brings satanic division. And no, it's it's fine. The woman, oh, we, I, yeah, but I was, it starts with that little bit. And that, well, now we want to make the same money. Now we want the same jobs. Now we're le more lesbians than ever, right? There was never so many lesbians. Now they're doing construction. I know a lesbian uh, married this other girl that was one of and I know her. And she's a garbage truck guy. Because they want all those jobs. So not only are they getting the man, man's jobs, more men are becoming homosexual yep. because of the same spirit. Yeah. So in the spiritual realm. So demons are taking over these weak men because they're allowing the women and they're becoming. And then the weak men are turning into that and the girls are turning to the men and they're becoming trans, transsexuals now yeah. where the men are the woman and the woman's the man and they just change their sex so the man dresses up as a woman and the woman as a man but then they have sex and it's a whole down it's all satanic you know, because of the order and that's where it ends up and that's where Satan so then they tell you oh well you know we're born this way no when I was yeah but if you're born again you don't have to live that way. You're born that way. I might have been born in sin too, but when I become born again, so now we have even a church or sin, it's really bad. So now when I'm born again, I'm I'm born in righteousness. So if I was that, just like drugs and alcohol, then God's power will to change that. But now we have such a watered down gospel in the church where basically um you, you can't even get free of that in the church. Now it's, it's, it's okay. Now we have pastors leading. That's how bad it's getting. Because that's how Satan does. Why? It's not even about you. It's about God's order. He wants to rebel. And if he can get people to rebel, he can break up marriages and he can destroy the kids. And then these those kids will destroy that generation. He wipes out a whole generation. And that's where he ends up coming. Now we have what? Liberal colleges. Liberal kids. And eventually, we're going to have a liberal, uh, where, where the minority will be the conservative, and there, there won't be any. Uh, now it's like 50-50, there's a fight going on, but eventually, though this generation that had some morals and had order in the home and order in the church and order in the family dies out, and now it's we're all the same, so Satan takes over because God's coverings off it, and it's all a mess. And then Satan and your kids get on drugs and alcohol because it all started with the woman not wanting to submit, basically in the garden. Right, right, right. That's good. I was wondering why I was standing up here and I was like, wait, I thought I had more than this. And then that's why God had me stop because that was good stuff. And I actually want to, and I actually want to jump off of that too. But 
real quick before I feed on that. Uh, I don't know why God was showing me this, but also you gotta know this too. As a woman, if you get in, if you come in the way and you step out of your place, even if what you're saying to your husband may be right about you know a certain situation, you can come in the way of God trying to show your husband that way. But there's too much there's too much of this going on, and there's not much of this going on between the man and God. So the woman comes in the way of God and the man. And that's how relationships get destroyed. What you say? No, that's exactly right. The grace, I, I know exactly what he's talking about. Because when there's that fight, you're not going to give in to you. But when the order comes in, if it's really God, then both hear from God. And the yeah. man, if he's submitted to God, he wants to do God's way. Right. He will do it, and he'll come to his say even his senses mm -hmm. but if there's no submission he's not going to bend because he's right. not going to want to be an Ahab right? because the, the, the real problem is the Jezebel yeah. thing and that's yeah. what God has and to deal with first I know, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and another thing I want to say about another thing about, about unity like this morning when me and my, my wife were in, in order and we're not in and we're, right. lately it's been really good I mean we've had right. our and you can edit all whatever you want to edit or whatever as well. but, but even and on the trip, she was, did that second half of the meeting. We didn't talk. Anymore. And this morning, she ta said things that I said in a post that I didn't talk nothing about wow. religion. And um, glory to God, I read something. I said, I had this in my post. Right. And it was told. I didn't talk Yeah, I've seen you guys nothing. do that a few times. Yeah, and I, mean, I, I don't need Because honestly, yeah. she has the old Because I don't go to her page much. Right. Because she's in Portuguese, and I need to. But she doesn't really. But she yeah, so it's like... I see, yeah, that's what happens when, this, when there's... It's that spiritual right. thing. But when we're not... I don't know, yeah. If we're not, then it's a, it's it's harder. Well, right? another thing I want to say, like... Because, like, remember what I said? And I said this many times, and I don't know... There's a reason why God's having you say it many times. When the woman submits... Because we see that first right there where it says the woman submits to the man, the man submits to the woman. And we don't get that. But when the woman submits to the man, there's a grace that comes upon, just like how God is able to submit to you when you submit to him. Okay? So if the woman would just see that, you see, okay, just like you said, right? The, the woman always trying to be equal with the man. If they would submit, there would be a oneness and equal, equal, equality, or however you say it, is that the right word? Equality between them. In, in, the, in everything they do. Just like how God, the son came in submission with the father, and the father made himself one with the son. And just like how the husband will make himself one with the woman. And they'll be able to live and breathe together. And that, if the woman, you want to be a woman, you want to be equal with your husband or for real, then you don't have to be a transgender. All you got to do is submit. <laughs> so, but, you want to say something? Yeah, because God's covenant. And when yeah. you're in covenant with your wife, you're in covenant with God. Right. And same with brothers and sisters of Christ. When you're at in division, right, it's like, and right. it, even Scripture says, if you're have that with your wife, God won't even hear the husband's prayer, right, or and the vice versa. And then there's that. Right. It's what? If the husband don't hold bitterness, or your prayers will be hindered. Yeah, and bitterness. Right. So Satan will get. So it takes both. both. It can't happen with just the wife submitting right. or and the husband. But when the wife submits. The husband will have the grace to be able to do what he's called to do. Right. So it, it's 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 like everything's harder. Yeah. And the thing is, it is so much easier to have the submission role. Oh yeah. Because I always say that. I said I honestly wish I could have that. Because then you're not responsible. Yeah. You just say yeah and do it. It's so much easier than because, but when you. I, I'm telling you, it is because all you gotta do is, and then, it, and it, it's like it's an easier. It's like you don't have to lead. It's right. like, I mean, everybody wants to lead because it's it, it's it's all oh, leading. It's but there's no, you're not responsible. Right. Adam was responsible for Eve when he ended up becoming Ahab in the garden. Well, that's good. Ahab in the garden. That's when they both messed up. Right. He could have co he covered he her. Covered, he covered her yeah. sin. God, Jesus has covered our sin when we're submitted to Him. Right. When we come out of submission, even though our sin, I mean, we go back in repentance, it's covered in that. I'm not saying we're not covered, but <clears throat> we're out of, when we're walking in the Spirit, we're out of, we're in condemnation. That's the, the world lives in condemnation. Right. So they lie. 
to, to sue that, they fill it with um, hobbies and this, but there's always condemnation because of the conscience of, of what God gives us. Mm -hmm. Jesus, in submission, you have a clean conscience. Right. And you're out from getting it tormented from the devil. Right. And because you, you're out of covering. The torment, if you're in the woman's submit, then the only torment can come through the husband if he's wrong. Right. Because he'll filter. Yeah. He'll filter out whatever's going through. And that's the thing. That's that's what the pro, that's what another thing. Like the wife is like worries about that all the time. Like I mean, I, I'm married. That's why I know this. You know, like the wife will say, "Well, what if he's wrong? You know what I mean? And what if? Well, okay, just like what Shane said. You're okay." But if you're submitted to God, what are you worried about? That's that's he has to worry about that. And if you're the man is submitted to God, then if you're as long as you're not getting in the way, he comes and corrects it anyway. And then he, and if he you're wrong, if God knows you're not trying to be wrong or evil, right. or wrong heart. He's gonna bless you because you're doing you're right. Yeah. I mean, and then you think scenarios. He still like, blessed Abraham even when Abraham. And who was that too? Right. And, and he is one. And the woman came up with that idea. Oh, sleep with her. And then uh, later, she was so upset that she did that. Mm -hmm. She made hell on earth for the whole family. Right. Because right. she's like, what did I do? Because yeah, she wanted down. to make things happen on her own. And he should have said, no, you crazy woman. I'm not going to sleep with you. <laughs> but, his, I mean, whatever hormones he might have had left, might have had a play in it. I don't know what right. did. But he was like, whatever happened, you know, at 90 years old, I mean, I don't know what could happen. There must have been a lot, of, lot better diets back then or something. But my God, but he should have just said, "You're crazy," but I, I understand your heart. Right. You know that you want that for me. But and then they wouldn't have to wait another 13 years. I don't think to have eyes. It was a rebellion to number 13 because it took 13 years after that rebellion. Mm. Right. And that God right. saw that was going to happen. He didn't just wipe out the the woman because He lets us make our choices. Right. And now we have this mess today because of that. Yeah, right. The whole Islam thing is because of that. Well, Father, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus, yes. God. We thank you, Lord God, that we will not be under the curse of this generation, God. We will not be under the spells of this generation, Lord. And if anybody comes into the church or we can come in, in, in fellowship or we come near anybody who's under the spirit of this age, God, that we will not tolerate it, God. That we will not come become one with it, Lord. That we will stand up, Lord, and speak the truth in love, God, so that they can come under <coughs> under the, the spirit of God, not the spirit of this age, God. And I thank you, Lord, that you would give us uh, the grace, God, that you would give us the ability, Lord, to speak truth without hindrance or without what anybody will think, God, in the midst of this homosexual, Lord, transgender, all, whatever you want to call it, God. But in the midst of all this garbage, Lord, and this chaos, God, that you would still give us the boldness, God, to bring out the sharp sword out of our mouths, God, so that the men and women can be set free, God, and this nation, not the nation, but the church in the nation, God, can be set free, God, and the marriages can really be proclaimed under the Spirit of God. And I thank you, Lord, that you would subdue us, God, that you would show us your ways, God, so that our ways can emanate your ways, God, and let everything we do, let our lives, let our let our marriages, Lord, let our relationships be a shadow, a type and a shadow of your relationship with the bride and your relationship with the Father, Jesus. Amen. We thank you, Lord.